Easy guys, welcome back to Chaz's No BS Reptile Advice. Um, I was perusing Facebook, looking for trouble, looking for, <laughs> for people to wind up, being the pariah of the hobby that I am. And I didn't find any, it was crap. But what I did find on an excellent Facebook group, uh, close to my heart, uh, called the Northern Reptile Forum on Facebook. So even if you're from Canada, from America, from Australia, we've got people all over. We've got people, uh, quite a few people watching in the United Arab Emirates, which is pretty cool. So, you know, big up. Um, join the Northern Reptile Forum. They're, they're a, a very helpful bunch. Um, really cool. They're, they're, they're trying to raise standards, but in a, in a friendly way. There's a very good uh, community spirit there. I can see the posts from fellow shop owners, Lucan and others, and uh, Jordan, really, really cool guys. Um, and, you know, I said that I was gonna, gonna uh, use this. They basically, over the course of Christmas, they had a series of uh, mass debates. <laughs> Did I say that right? Yeah. And being the adept mass debater that I am, I thought that I would have a go at uh, making a video of me doing it. Oh, actually, no, no, that sounds wrong. Anyway, it's a bad joke. You've got to be northern to get it, I think. Right. So, what are people's thoughts on rescues? Or the term, I have just rescued. This subject seems to be brought up and dropped quite often. I'd be interested to hear everyone's perspective. Way too often, when browsing the local sales pages, I see wanted ads asking for reptiles. Are these proper rescues? What constitutes a proper rescue? Then there's the, I've just rescued. What does that actually mean? Have you really just rescued that animal or grabbed a quick bargain? Do those people realize that rescuing an animal and then asking for help is just transferring that animal from one envir bad environment to the next? I mean, fair enough, the intentions might be in the right place, but if you're taking on an animal that needs a vet and you don't take it to the vet, then ask Facebook what you should do with your rescue that has its tail kinked behind its head and a foot missing. Are you then really helping an animal just by loving it? Oh, I love that. I love it. Absolutely love it. And I thought, yeah, oh, fuck it. I can get my teeth into that. Um, actually, I totally pretty much agree with the principle that is mentioned here. So, rescuing animals. How am I going to do this? Love is not enough. As Wet 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 would say on Marty Pello, yes, love is all around, but it's not enough. It's certainly not going to keep your reptile alive. Get over the fact. Don't anthropomorphize it. Don't knit it a woolly jumper. Don't give it a hot water bottle to lie on while you're watching EastEnders. It's all bullshit. Your reptile is a reptile. It needs reptile stuff. You cannot rescue an animal unless you have the financial means with which to improve the lot you have rescued it from. So, if you're moving a mistreat bearded dragon from one shitty enclosure to another shitty enclosure that happens to be in your house, then that actually is no improvement at all. If your animal requires a new UV light, is it under thermostatic control and the rest of it? If you are a freebie hunter, you are not a rescuer. You are a plague on our hobby. And I agree with everything that is here, that is said in, in that statement. There are rescues and there are good rescues and there are people that, are, uh, that, that conscientiously go out of their way. And the example that I, I think of immediately is the Midlands Giant Snake Rescue, where um, Joanna and Jez go out of their way all over the country to rescue and rehome the pretty much exclusively the larger boids, the boas and pythons and they're, they're a fantastic couple we raised their, their cause earlier this week the way that they go above and beyond with no financial support, no financial help who actually would find it difficult to become a fully proper registered charity with all the correct checks and balances because of the new AAL law prevents that and all they're trying to do is make sure that these guys get rehomed. They don't charge rehoming fees or anything. They're just ace, really, really cool people who are genuinely in it for the animals. 
are they the most advanced kids in the world? No, I don't even think that they would claim that they are. But what they are is they both love them, but they're willing to put their money where their mouth is. If you're going to rescue an animal, it must mean a marked increase in the quality of care that this animal receives. Love is not enough. Nobody doubts that people lo love them. Quite often, quite possibly, the homes that they've come from, the animal is loved. It's not neglected. It's just people are skint, or they could never really afford it, or they prioritised something else. This week's bag of skunk or similar. And it, 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 I'm being flippant, of course. But the, the point being, love is not enough. You need, you you need infrastructure. You need finance. You need space. You need experience. You need all these things. So, you know, when we say we see the ads mentioned here, which is like any unwanted reptiles, PM me with details. It's like. One, you just come across as a needy council estate scumbag. Two, the fact that all the videos you share of your scummy, shit-ridden vivariums, yet yeah, we're not going to take you seriously. And predominantly most of the sales pages on Facebook have warnings written, do not freebie hunt on here. Joanna and Jez have built a reputation, slowly and over time, and at which point people now approach them, which is why they travel the length and breadth of the country to actually uh, rescue these animals, and people choose to go to them because they know that the animals are going to go to a place where there are checks and balances before the animal is released. It is not done for profit, it is not done to make money, it is done to make sure the animals are looked after. They, they, they are inundated and they're pulled left, right and centre at the minute because too many giants have been bred. Now these people are people that absolutely adore the giants and there are plenty of people across the country who adore the giants. The problem is there's plenty more people who think that they love the giants and adore the giants until they have a giant and then one day the giant has a bad day and they shit themselves and then they stop handling it and then suddenly it's a giant that's just getting more and more wild by the day. Unfortunately, a lot of those exist too, and you know they—they we mark them as advanced snakes for a reason. The problem is that other breeders and people have sold them as oh, it's just like any other snake; it's just bigger. That's bullshit. It's bullshit. That's why we've got this giant rescue. It's why everyone's screaming from the rooftops to try and get them funding so that they can actually move forward with this because we know over the next two or three years they're going to get totally shit on. Then when we've got our uh, gyro boy, gyro girl sat wanting the free reptiles and into them because basically they don't want to pay the 250, 300 quid for the beardy rig and they'll just stick it in that knackered old crack three foot aquarium. Then, yeah, if that makes us cynics, yeah, then guilty as charged. Um, the, the rescuing thing, the, the, it's being able to quantify what a rescue is and one of the major arguments for like the National Centre for Reptile Welfare was how do we qualify who is a good rescue and who isn't and to that extent I partially kind of have to go along with that in as much as we know that there are freebie hunters but then I also understand how offensive it would be to people like uh, Joanna and Jez or Lee Gregory in Wales where they're doing what they do because they love what they do and then to be accused of being freebie hunters kind of is like a kick in the balls and it's like yeah you're taking the piss and that's that's the problem because those guys are trying their best and they're doing what they can with what they've got. Um, whereas we we all know that there are the freebie hunters and it's a really difficult task trying to work out who is genuine and who is not. Different elements, of th I mean we rescue here in, in as much as we take on surrendered animals. We don't sell bearded dragons anymore so we, we adopt them out. We don't make any charge for this. And bear in mind, every other shop in Sheffield still sells, actively sells beard dragons. We don't. We give them away free, as long as they have proof of a settle. So that's kind of the way that we're trying to give back. Although, obviously, we're a shop, so we're the devil incarnate and everybody hates us, but that's just the standard position. So it, this, is, this is where we are. No one gets an easy shake of this. There's a shitty end of the stick for everybody, and that includes even shops that want to rescue. We're still nefarious, money grabbing, profit hungry bastards that everybody hates. But what do you do? Um, if you want to become a rescuer, 
you need to have the finances, you need to have the resources, you need to have the space, you need to have the knowledge, you need to be able to maybe try and talk to people about donations or other things that they can put forward. Just asking for it free is a difficult situation. I know that Joanna and Jez, when they were down at the meeting with us at the West Midlands, quoted something in excess of £10,000 of their own funds have gone into the giant snake rescue. And then other people are already established helping them, such as Alex Jay's at House of Venom, big up Alex. Really, you know, he's 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 really tried to help out and stand his stand up for them and, 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 and do his bit. We've probably been a bit shoddy, a bit behind the curve, but we've realised actually what they do is going to become invaluable and we've sold giants in the past and we have a responsibility to try and pay towards that. Um, so even though we're not actively going to be able to rescue the giants, we want to be pay, maybe pay or contribute, maybe do some um, raffles and things to help push that forward. But yeah, it's it. I think I think rescue if if it's one of those those rescues like the the giant snake rescue then i will support them to the hill when i see the post on facebook i've just rescued you are rescued shit you've taken something on that you don't know what you took on you can't assess its health because you haven't got the experience to access its health you haven't got the money to take it to the vet if you did have the money to take it to the vet, you wouldn't be putting this futile question on Facebook in the first place. Now, people will see this as bullshit and call me an arsehole. It's fine, I've got broad shoulders, bring it on. But it's the truth. You can't polish a turd. You can't gild the lily. You know, it, it is what it is. You, if, if you're asking these questions and you don't have the funds and you don't have the means, what have you rescued? You haven't rescued anything. You have continued this animal's misery in perpetuity the fact that you loved it called it terence knitted it a jumper and sat it on your top while you watch coro is not really actually the correct husbandry of a reptile and regardless how much you cuddle it it's not going to get any better and you aren't going to improve its immuno health or anything else to do with it I know it's probably slightly negative, and I'm sure that there's some great rescues out there apart from the giants but they're the ones i mean proteus that's been going a long time Proteus Reptile Trust, that, that's been going years and years, I think. But then I'm kind of struggling, and it's these home rescues. I want people to find out who your local rescue is, uh, develop contacts with them, work with them. We will continue to try for the smaller stuff or the stuff that we don't really sell anymore, blue tongs and stuff. We'll take in, we'll adopt out, we'll do all the rest of it. But the giants, I need to obviously pay back to the society, the reptile society, the community, because we've contributed to it. We've now stopped selling mainland retics. Mainland Burmese will stop once the last two have gone. Um, but that doesn't mean that we'll be making it any easier for the people that want to buy these. We'll still be as strict as we ever have been. Um, but you've got to give back. I don't want to pay back to some big burgeoning rescue centre that's got a shit ton of funding and all the rest of it already because I see that akin to the RSPCA I'd sooner help mom and pop's little small independence I'm a little small independent shop I'm not a multi-million pound wholesaler get them to help the big rescue I'll help the little local guys around me who I can hopefully directly impact but also they can directly help me when I get something dumped on me and I don't know what to do with it and all shops have been in that position do you want to take this Paul? not really now where's she without her? I'm chucking it in the canal fucking hell right give it here even though we don't necessarily have anywhere to put it or anything else but what's my other option? watch it get chucked down the canal it happens it happens you know as much as these divvies at the end of the, the hobby will tell you, no, it never happens. Like this, this, this retic that got dumped, uh, Manny in fucking reporting the Guardian or something, and like they're they're all being snippy and saying it's cynical and all this shit because they've all been given a load of lip because they can't take giants and all the rest of it, and it's all very pithy and all very, and it's like you're just being pricks. Like what's the point? Like it's been dumped. 
you knew it was going to get dumped. The reason for it being dumped is obvious there's too many of them. The kid can't look after it anymore. Or he can't hasn't been able to reom it because none of the shops would want to take it in. And he's done exactly what I've just said somebody will, will threaten to do here. With their Iggy, with their boss, with their whatever. Where if you're not having it, it's going in fucking forest, isn't it? And it's like, that's what you're dealing with. Wake up, you morons. You think that you know this hobby. You're that fucking up in your ivory towers. You ain't got a clue what's going on. Uh, not on the front line and not with the shops anyway and and like these rescues these guys that are willing to take on the freebies you're not you're not helping a situation all you do is delay it and then eventually we've got to take those animals off here which are in an even shitter state or they or they die uh which for some of them is going to be sweet relief and we'd sooner try and get them into proper rescues where there's the funds and the means and the infrastructure to be able to do it I know that was a rant and a ramble and a bit all over the place, but it's, it's interesting, you know, um, thinking about that sort of stuff. I don't know what the American rescue scene is like, and we've got a lot of listeners over in America and, and uh, in Canada as well. So how what's the rescue scene like for you? On your ads pages, do you not encourage this sort of thing with, with people freebie hunting? Or... Um, is it other long established reptile rescues or refuges or sanctuaries or whatever else so if you know what your local one is give it a big up all the guys in the uk i know you're all scattered all over the uk so if you've got a local rescue that you want to recommend that you want to big up that you want to say come on this is it let's give back to the community we know that there's a national center for reptile welfare they advertise themselves all over the place i am not interested in them i'm interested in the little independence don't want the big boys, not interested in the big boys, I'm interested in the little independents. So yeah, if you uh, share those all over the bottom of this, in the comments, whatever else, then everybody gets to know, we're all the richer for it. Thanks for watching guys, we'll be back again soon. Cheers.